Okay, so we're live. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, a little after one o'clock, we're gonna let uh, the waiting room load in and we'll get started here in a couple minutes. So thank you for your time today and, uh, and, uh, and your patience. All right, we're gonna get started. So welcome everybody uh, to, uh, to whatever week this is. Uh, I think this is week 12 or 13 of, of our spirit series. We're gonna be doing this uh, on a biweekly basis uh, going forward through the rest of the summer. Um, again, my name is Alex Anderson, uh, director of the equity department here at Time Equities. And today I have uh, two, two newbies joining us, uh, one being uh, Kathy. Uh, in the upper, it would depend, I guess, depends on where your screen is. Um, Kathy is our, uh, our, our head of digital marketing, um, and she'll be conducting the interview with uh, Naomi, uh, who is our director of interior design. And it's not what you probably think it is from an interior design standpoint, but it's an interior design as it relates to um, our commercial uh, primary office buildings. I'm, I'm, but you can probably expand on that a little bit more uh, there may be some apartments in there too. So, um, what I before we get to that, um, of course, you know everyone probably knows how Zoom works now. If you have any questions or, or want to submit any chat, you know feedback, you know you can do so in the bottom of your screen. Um, I would also encourage you for those that are on this call, if you have any, if you want to make any suggestions uh, to uh, new content. Um, or things that you want us to talk about in future uh, spirit series, please submit that and we'll, and we'll see what we can do and pull from our library uh, of staff. Um, as, it relates to, um, as it relates to our next spirit series, which will be, Kathy, when's our next one? Is it, um, it'll be in two it's weeks. Uh, August 19, and it will be with uh, Atif Ali. Yes, yeah, so Atif uh, is, our, um, is our head of uh, alternative investments. And that, and that means um, alternative investments outside of real estate. Um, so I think that could be a, an interesting uh, uh, topic to, um, to come back in a couple weeks. Um, so tell your friends, tell your family, tell whoever, please join. Um, all right, so um, I've taken up enough time. I'm going to disappear um, and log back in as an attendee and uh, I'll hand it over to, to Kathy and Naomi to uh, take it away. All right? All right, Good luck, guys. thank you. So welcome everyone um, and uh, welcome Naomi and thanks for joining us. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about interior design today and we'll also talk about the impact that COVID-19 uh, has had on interior design. Um, so let's start with a little introduction. Uh, so Naomi, maybe you can talk uh, to us about where you come from and what your background is and what you do now uh, at Time Equity. Okay, I'm very happy to do so. Thank you very much for the invitation, by the way. So as you hear from my mm -hmm. awful German accent, I grew up in Germany, even though I was born in the United States in Santa Monica, California. And that's why I luckily have a US passport that enabled me to work here. My background is in art. I went to the Art Academy and then pretty soon got into the film industry and worked many years as a set designer for film and television in Germany and a little bit international, uh, internationally too. 
So even though set design is, uh, of course, different from interior design, there is a tradition of uh, interior, uh, set designers get somehow getting into uh, interior design. And I'm quickly going to touch on what a set designer does, because then you get an idea why Francis Greenberger thought it might make sense to have a set designer work for time equities. So as a set designer, you need to be an all-rounder. Everything you see on the screen, except for the actors, is part of set design. So it's the location, the colors, the materials, the furniture, vehicles, wayfinding, signage, food, weapons, all kinds of props. Uh, so from large to small, you have to make sure the whole thing goes together and tell the story. And very often you have to put your creativity into turning something relatively crappy looking old place uh, with the least amount of effort into a wonderful, sparkling, amazing setting. And you have to do that under working under very tight budgets. And so constantly thinking about low cost, high impact solutions. And this is the transition to uh, the real estate um, industry because that's right. sort of after over there as well. So when I met Francis for the first time at a, um, at a book fair in Frankfurt about five or six years ago, he asked me about my set design and said, we actually need this kind of job description at, or we, we can use this kind of job description at Time Equities. Time Equities normally works with architects, um, but not every building needs an architectural solution. And so he felt we could use some outside the box thinking. Uh, so he helped, uh, he asked me to help with the work on a large office campus in Cleveland, Ohio, rethinking public spaces of four buildings. And uh, we did some combination of traditional renovating there and some unconventional stuff like historical typewriter connections. And all the time, really looking closely what existing elements can we still keep while making the space as fresh as possible. And this project turned into a great success. Um, the buildings were initially only 40% leased out when Aaron Medeiros and Jonathan Dolber bought them for 20 million. Then we spent 1 million on the renovation and two years later they were fully occupied and worth 40 million. So this That's is- That's crazy. Yeah, I love this story. Good job. Um, so <laughs> wonderful numbers to hear. And uh, of course I, I love to think that it's all due to the wonderful design. But um, definitely it was part of it and it shows how an investment in interior design mm -hmm. does pay off. And since then I work for Time Equities partially from here, I mean, from New York and partially from Berlin. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, now I could share some pictures if you want to just to show some. Yeah, um, please. Yeah, this is showing some, some small interventions. Are you seeing the? Wait a minute. Yeah. It's supposed to be green. Are you? It's it's not the the screen is not green on my end. Are you? Uh, are you seeing a very ugly hallway? I'm seeing the gray hallway. Ah, okay, very good. <laughs> then for some reason, yeah. so I think it's uh, fair to say that it was a little bit ugly before, and this is what we did of it. Wow. Um, so you can. This was a parking garage. This, and this is a residential building in Brattleboro, where, which had this outdated murals. And then we, yeah, we made it modern, but while keeping the historical spirit of it. This is a um, shopping center where we just added some paint and completely changed the experience. Another shopping center entrance and a cafeteria. Right. Actually, I, I wish I had some pictures of Cleveland now, but I don't. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe later. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's interesting to see uh, the impact of interior design. It really changes the mood of the space. Uh, yeah. It becomes warmer, more inviting. Uh, yeah. I can understand, you know, how much it can have an impact. Yeah. Um, and, the, and there are really some studies that show that people link the experience that they make in a space very much to the um, to the to the design of the space <laughs> so yeah there um, you go. yeah okay so i know you've been focusing on a, on a specific project called the quad mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can tell us more about it yeah 
Um, so the quad. The quad is when we take a relatively small portion out of a very, very large building, say 6,000 square feet out of 200,000 square feet camp, office campus. And we put in there a number of flexible lease offices plus super nice lounge space and a bunch of recreational amenities. So the quad is something between a co-working space and the traditional executive office suites paired with innovative amenities. To name a few amenities, of course, the obligatory pool table, ping pong table, and putting green, various informal seating areas for collaboration or quiet work. Sometimes we have an espresso bar with a barista or even golf simulator if we have enough room. Then uh, there are two really signature amenities that we have, and those are uh, first the art room, uh, which is a fully equipped studio with art supplies so that tenants who like to be creative can come and paint whenever they want to. And we have also a teacher there once or twice a week giving stone carving or whatever watercolor classes and doing events like zip and paint, which became very popular before COVID all. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how everything was impacted by COVID. So the other okay. unusual amity, amenity that we um, have is a, that we provide a massage room, a very nice one, and work with local physiotherapists uh, who give massages on their own schedule. So this costs the building nothing. We just provide the room. But for the tenants, um, they really love it. And I was surprised how many tenants actually have time or employees have time to get a massage <laughs> but somehow they they manage and um yeah we'll see i mean right now massages are not allowed and we'll see how this picks up again um so the the one real amenity about the quad is of course that we are providing our tenants with flexible workspace they have now the possibility of on-demand expansion within the building as needed and this is something a lot of uh, companies have need for. They have temporary needs for additional employees if they have a seasonal business somehow. And traditionally, those tenants would lease larger spaces just to accommodate for peak times and then leave the space empty the rest of the time. But nowadays, tenants are looking for more flexible solutions. So providing them with these flexible offices in the same building makes us uh, very attractive for them and less likely to lose a tenant. And right. as long as we have the capacity, um, the quad is, of course, also open to individual tenants as well. Startups are not only in the big cities, but also in the suburbs. And then we also have in mind that there's always the possibility that a startup gets bigger and eventually needs more space. So we could think of the quad also as an incubator to organically grow our new tenants. Um, that's the idea. So All right. before it sounds like it, it, especially with COVID nineteen, uh, some companies might be looking for office spaces in the suburbs to get closer to their workforce and avoid commute. So uh, this flexibility uh, sounds sounds like what people are going to be looking for uh, in the short term, right? Yes, flexibility, and also de-densifying their own offices, like. Um, companies that are that might be in the area somewhere and they have right now they have eight people in one room and now with after COVID they they want to have only four or five people in one room so they can we hope that they will uh, turn to us or we think that this is going to be the case that uh, yeah we heard it from some companies already that they are moving in this direction yeah right okay all right do you want to share you have some visuals you want to share? Uh, yes. So now you see our pilot project, uh, which is in Pasipani Century Campus. This is the um, not by the back entrance, which is like the entrance from the garden where a lot of people are coming from, also from the other two buildings. It's the espresso bar. So we see uh, you see we use a modern aesthetic with bright colors. This is part of the um, part of the office area with a concrete floor. We have wood floor in the common areas, wood and carpet. Over here, you see that it's a 
um, yeah, that we're using nice seating areas, a little bit like hotel, boutique hotel uh, style, but also ergonomic uh, furniture, sort of like in airport business lounges, you have these super nice um, chairs that, are, that recline and you can put your device in the right position and you have power to charge your device, etc. So we're providing all this. And here you see how everything <laughs> is connected. <laughs> And that's okay with COVID, right? You can play a ping pong if you have your mask on, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So in one of our quads, the ping pong room was, or the, 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 this area was closed off, but then they realized it doesn't make sense because it's, I mean, they are more than six feet apart anyway, and they will have their mask on. So right. they started using it again. Uh, this is another quad. This is in Jefferson, New Jersey. Oh, it's called Jefferson Exchange. You see the putting green here. Over here, you see the espresso bar in the foreground. It's, it's large spaces. It's pretty big, huh? It's, it's very big. The typical quad yes. is so far between 6,000 and 7,000 square feet. We're planning okay. one for Milwaukee, which is even more, even bigger. It's 8,500. And, um, yeah, the nice thing about the quad so far is like it, it's in suburban areas, so real estate is not so expensive, so we could be very generous with the, um, with the layout. So you see right. the two desk, um, two desk office is very generous, and in New York, you probably wouldn't have that. But now, with, after COVID, it's going in this direction anyway, that spaces need to be bigger. Right. Uh, but that's what, that's also one reason why we're sort of happy with the direction of the, that the quad we went so far, uh, because we already, because everything is sort of COVID uh, compatible already. We already use very easily to clean furniture. It's like the, uh, for, for the desks, the recommendation, the official okay. recommendation is to use laminate and we're using laminate um, and the, all the materials like even the fabrics are commercial grade. Oh, by the way, this is a fitness center. It's uh, shown in here just to show you that uh, the fitness center, even though it's not part of the quad, we also apply the same aesthetic than um, the combination of exposed ceiling and drop ceiling and art from the Greenberger collection. There's some marketing pictures, wide angle. And again, in the wow. background, yeah. And here, like this, <laughs> so over here you see what I mean by the art room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I really like that it's glass. You can see yeah. through because, you know, it's good for COVID too because mm -hmm. you still need to separate people, but because it's glass, you see what's going on. It's still open to the, exactly. uh, to the outside, to the world. So there's yeah. still some connection happening there. Yeah, absolutely. It's really as if we had this in mind already in many respects um, and you see how generous it is i mean whenever yes. i go to whenever i went there like uh, before covid there were like i don't know when there were six people in there um it was already i mean one was sitting they were spread out also already right so yeah and here you see that we um that we took a lot of inspiration from yeah boutique hotel lobbies and tried to make it a more residential no. nice it's very nice feeling Thanks. Um, here's the art room again. Okay, of course, we also have meeting rooms in the quads. Um, those are open for all tenants. They can just book them either by an app or by directly uh, talking to the barista or the building manager, management. Um, okay. yeah, so, this, so this is obviously a configura desk configuration before COVID because we wouldn't do that any more um, mm -hmm. to have them so close together. We we'll spread it out. More like over here, you see in the foreground um, the two desks. And in, yeah, so that was that was the quad. Wow, that looks great. I would yeah. go work there. <laughs> yeah, I heard that from Play some people. Do some, <laughs> some art. <laughs> Every time I have need to visit the building, I take my computer and I take and I arrange for myself that I have that I'm doing my work day from there. Yeah, yeah this is this is a nice space. Um, so 
So that's the quad. I know you've been working also on the staircase project, right? Yes. That I've, I've worked on stairs. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. COVID. Sure, but um, one, one reason, wait a minute. Can we, can I just quickly show you some, some of the future quads that we will do? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Because, okay, good. Uh, I think it should be here. Do you see this build, big building here? So that's yeah. um, that's Milwaukee. So the future quads that we have planned are in four different cities. So one of them is Milwaukee, and that's where we were actually just before starting construction over there, but then COVID came. Um, it's a 690,000 square feet, huge former federal wow. building. And we're doing in there this 8,500 what um, with quite a large portion will be uh, flexible offices and mm -hmm. uh, so over here you see the, in this visual in this uh, i mean yeah you see how it relates how uh, the the proportion of um, the quad or of the, mm -hmm. uh, the amenities uh, it's actually only two percent two point zero five percent of the whole building uh, will go to amenities which is which means that we can spread so much cost um, on, or we can spread the cost for those amenities on such a, on so much square footage. Um, okay. Yeah. So here are some renderings of Milwaukee, how that will look. Also with an always important, the communal table, a moss wall in the background. Yeah. So here are some, this is just to show another amenity. Um, we have bicycles uh, labeled with the branding of the building. And, and also, of course, we have always um, Francis Greenberger's art collection as part of it. I mean, we're happy that mm -hmm. we can display uh, real art. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute, do I have more? Yeah, over here you see it's like a real landscape park that we did in front of one of the quads. And this is uh, the logo. Um, so we came up, it's just showing from the, the first three, three buildings now, then in Fairfax, Waters Edge and Pittsburgh, we're still in the process of developing the logos. Um, so we came up, uh, yeah, we came up with this name, the Quad, because, we, uh, because it represents four pillars of our brand. Um, the four pillars are amenities, uh, flexible offices, amenities, uh, design, and community. Okay. Yeah. So over here you see again the flexible offices, amenities, design, community. And here on this map you see where we have them already or where they are planned. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for sharing this. Sure. Um, so yeah, we were, I was just saying, I know you've been working on renovating staircases. Yeah. Uh, so maybe yeah. you can give us some more details about this project. Yeah, totally. Um, let's see. So this is a project that actually, um, I started or we started developing last year already having in mind to encourage a life, healthy lifestyle by using the stairs. We wanted to activate staircases, the emergency staircases, which are, Normally just, I mean, they are heated, they are lit up, they are clean, nobody's using them and they normally look pretty sad. So we wanted to upgrade them, but back then it was still like, hey, this is an investment, do we really want to um, spend this money? But then COVID came and now here's a, yeah, it's sort of like a positive COVID story because this project really picked up pace um because suddenly a lot of people want to use the staircase they don't want to go in a in an elevator they will want to wait 20 minutes for the elevator until it's empty and um especially in lower rise buildings uh, people are totally using the stairs already and even in higher rise buildings they are sometimes between staircases they are um, using the stairs i mean between flights um, or if they are not on the 17th floor even though i must say i talked to one uh, co to our co-owner in Pittsburgh, and he said that he has a, that one of his tenants uh, is using the, is always going up to the 17th floor as for sports. So we also have these kind Sorry. of things. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, now we thought that um, 
that it's really time to look at the state of our staircases, uh, especially in the lower rise buildings, but also in some of the residential um, to okay. alleviate also the elevator use. And, um, try, and so we try to find low cost, high impact improvements by using paint, new lighting, sometimes only new lighting and finding ways of keeping the fire doors open. Um, so I can also show you some pictures for that. Yeah, please. And, oh, and, and I wanted to mention that upgrading or refreshing also gives the leasing people, uh, the staircases, gives the leasing people another good argument or plus on their hand to promote with potential tenants because nice welcoming staircases are suddenly also seen as a part of the amenity package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's another expense that I think makes really sense. So here you see a relatively nice already looking, not, not all building uh, staircases are looking this nice, but of course we can make them even nicer, like we did this in, wow. in Jefferson, New Jersey. And we're doing, this is 55 fifths, doing this in our home office. Very nice. Thanks. This is another wow. one idea for, um, for Mill Creek, Ohio. And here is a very low cost one. It's, I think it's a spectacular difference in a way, even though it's really easy to implement. It's very, uh, less than $2,000 for the whole building to do this. Wow. Yeah. And here is one for one of the four Cleveland buildings. And this is actually, you see the, I mentioned the typewriters, the historical typewriters before. This will be uh, that, yeah. that we have a collection in one of the Cleveland buildings. So this is one um, that we're doing ah. over there <laughs> to relate to that. Um, then we have this one. Wow. Yeah. That's very nice. It's Thank crazy you. how much it changes the mood of the yeah. of the space. It's definitely m much more inviting. Yeah, yeah. We hope that it will have some effect and that more people like it. But it's already, I mean, where we started it in Jefferson and Pasipani, New Jersey, and they loved it so much that they immediately asked us um, if we could do a third building which is which i'm oh. not even so involved with but they said yeah we know we're not so involved with but the tenant over there they also would like it really and so so it's picking up in a good way that's amazing good job thanks <laughs> um so it's 128 so i think we're close to be done um okay. i don't know if you guys have any questions you can uh ask a question in the chat box i don't see any questions by the way, Let's are you seeing this? That, is, that, is that your your road trip? Yeah, this is just uh, the road trip that I did to take care because I had to look at um, various offices for the quad and also for staircases. So over here you see where we're having the quads and where we're doing the staircases. That's so nice. So I went from New York to Water's Edge, Maryland, then to Fairfax, Virginia, then to Pittsburgh, um, even though in Pittsburgh we are holding off on the quad right now because of the COVID situation and then to Cleveland. Originally I had planned to go all this way to Milwaukee but that was also due to the COVID numbers and um, and also it was just too much driving so so I went back. Wow. Yeah. So the stairs are the stairs project I guess the staircases exactly. and Q is quad. And the queue is the quad, yes. So, and how long did it take you to do this road trip? Um, I was on the road 12 days, and that is because I could have done it in, in less time, but I stretched it uh, so that I, I would do only three hours of driving every day. And then I would set up my virtual office wherever I am. And I did uh, also, yeah, include two weekends. Um, and because I didn't want to stay in a hotel all the time, I took a little tent and went uh, took, uh, yeah, went into the American nature to experience that as well. That's why I wanted to, um, to stretch it out a little bit. 
this work trip. Well, and, and so it, the point of this work trip was to see uh, where, where where was going on with every project, right? To yeah, exactly. I mean, it's that always thing. that it, it's always that you have to visit projects at a certain time, and all of these projects are new already. But I have been like for four months, I was uh, not doing anything like most of our, uh, we, I could, wasn't mobile, I couldn't go anywhere. And so I really felt that these projects, uh, properties need my attention right now in order to keep them moving on. And um, so in Waters Edge, for instance, I had to visit like the actual um, conditions of the space where we are um, finalizing now the plans for the quad. And it did turn out that the existing conditions are different. So I met over there with uh, an architect to talk about it. And then in, yeah, in Fairfax, I also met with an architect. I mean, everything, of course, with a mask and with a distance. Mm -hmm. and, and in Cleveland, I, uh, the, the thing that was most urgent actually to do was um, Cleveland, because over there, we had a building where we just finished all the renovations and it was just missing the artwork and some other accessories and so over there it was um, yeah i installed the artwork that art and buildings had selected and um yeah and all of, and in all of these locations i had to look at the staircases because staircase is not like staircase they always have different conditions sometimes they have this heavy duty rubber then you cannot paint on the rubber sometimes and, right. and also we so always very specific see yeah exactly Very especially because we don't want to have like one solution for all because that's too expensive it's we yeah. always as i mentioned in the beginning we always want to um, work with whatever good is still existing uh, or whatever existing is still good um, we want to keep and then make interventions that are highly impactful and so i have to look yeah. at, at the things yeah themselves okay all right, Nami, uh, I'm going to share your email address in the chat room. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so guys, I don't see any questions here. Um, time equity, it's hard to do two things at once. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, um, so if, guys, if you have any questions um, after, uh, after this webinar, please feel free to reach out to Naomi. Uh, you know what, I will give you my email address too. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so thank you, Naomi, for uh, being with us today, for explaining all of this. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and okay. thank you all for joining us. And in two weeks, we have Atif Ali with us. He's the Director of Alternative Investments. So make sure to register. You will receive an email uh, from us. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, thank you and have a good day. And of course, stay healthy, stay well, and stay safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.